from the station that's on your side. This is Channel 7 News. Good morning, Arkansas. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're back with our sponsor, Baptist Health, to explain how staging can help physicians treat lung cancer. Baptist Health interventional pulmonologist, Dr. Sidney Hewlett, is here to explain how this technology works. And Dr. Hewlett, technology changing by the day, by the second, really, especially in the medical profession. So this is really interesting. First, let's talk about your title, your position. How does an interventional pulmonologist differ from just a pulmonologist? So an interventional pulmonologist is a pulmonologist that specializes in a uh, distinct group of procedures that really center around the diagnosis, the staging, which we'll talk about, yeah. uh, and the complications of lung cancer. Okay, I think we have a, a picture or video to talk about staging. What is staging exactly? Staging is um, the assessment of the, ex the extent of spread of a lung cancer. It's very important because after diagnosis, um, this, the extent of spread is specifically what determines the appropriate treatment for lung cancer. Lung cancer Cancer is a bad disease, period, and uh, it's very uh, uh, important to uh, match the uh, stage with the appropriate treatment. What kind of technology are you guys using for that staging diagnosis? So, historically, um, it was there was a surgical procedure called a mediastinoscopy where a surgeon made an incision in the chest and uh, went and sampled lymph nodes in the chest. Uh, in the early 2000s, a, a new modality came out called um, endobronchial ultrasound, and that was essentially a, a, a new um, uh, adaptation of something that had been out there where a camera essentially on a rubber hose has a ultrasound transducer on the end of it, and you can actually see through the walls of the air tubes in the lungs wow. and where the lymph nodes are situated. Uh, um, in order to biopsy them. Okay, interesting. So is that technology still used today or is it continuing to evolve? You guys get new it, stuff? It is. I mean, there's been technical uh, uh, changes, small technical changes, but it, it's pretty uh, similar um, and it's really gone from what was a novel technology at the time to something that's established in the recommended way to stage most lung cancers and incorporated in most professional guidelines now. What does it mean for the patients to come in? It's, it's really important. There's a lot of research that shows staging is done poorly, uh, both in academic centers and the community, just everywhere. Um, a lot of times people are uh, staged or um, uh, they get a CAT scan and a PET scan okay. and lymph nodes light up or enlarged and a lot of times that's taken at face value as there's cancer in those, no those nodes and that's not, that's not necessarily the case. You actually, actually have to sample the nodes. Pictures are never good enough with lung cancer, so that's where this comes in. How common is lung cancer? Uh, there's about uh, 250,000 new cases diagnosed in the, um, in the United States a year. It's uh, more prevalent uh, in Arkansas because of smoking rates. Um, and there's about 150,000 deaths from lung cancer a year. It's the most lethal cancer by far, more so than uh, the three cancers that follow it combined. Really? It's terrible. I yeah. did not realize that. Okay. Um, and what are some of the ways that people can reduce the risk and risk factors, uh, obviously you mentioned smoking. Is that just number one, hands it, down? It, it is, hands down. 85% yeah. of, of lung cancers are due to smoking. Um, so uh, stopping smoking is a, is a number one. But now there's um, new technology for screening the lung cancers from getting CAT scans to look to, to help to diagnosis in an earlier stage when people do get it. If someone smoked for a long period of time younger and then stopped smoking for a decade or two, uh, is that something that helps improve their hugely, hugely. really so yeah. the, the number of years you stop smoking it, it kind of refreshes your after several years your risk approaches a non-smoker really it, it never gets exactly to that level but um, yeah. it, it certainly is uh, drastically reduced and importantly with smoking um, most people that smoke don't get lung cancer most people that smoke don't die of lung cancer they die of heart disease um, of strokes and things like that it's the other effects of smoke smoking on your body that's that are more dangerous than lung cancer although lung cancer as I mentioned is very yeah. very lethal uh, um, and this is something too where you probably remind people if yeah, a couple of years if you can see a kind of effect it's never too late to stop smoking never right? too late even yeah. after you're diagnosed with lung cancer yeah right I and mean, you can develop a second lung yeah. cancer I mean it, it's never too late okay well there's some great information as always from Baptist Health and they help you keep on amazing every single day and that's why you need to call them if you have any questions at the Baptist Health Helpline. it is on your screen it's 1-888 Baptist super simple folks you can set up an appointment you can go talk with the pulmonologists over there the interventional pulmonologists like we have in studio with Dr. Hewlett today and all the great work that they do Dr. Hewlett thank you very much thank for you. explaining okay. all that and how it works and especially stuff that we need to know